Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18's Mumbai Newsroom. I'm Sumera Abdi and you're watching MF Corner. On the show today, we have a very interesting topic, which is fixed maturity plans or FMPs. What are they and why are they suddenly so attractive? We have two experts who will be joining in to give you a 360 degree perspective on this. We have Mr. D.P. Singh, who is the Deputy MD and uh, Chief Business Officer at SBI Mutual Fund and Prabhleen Bajpai, who is the founder of FinFix Research and Analytics. So thank you both very much, uh, Mr. D.P. Singh and Prabhleen, for joining in. Um, you know, first, I want to begin by asking you, sir, uh, you know, what is it that have made FMP suddenly so attractive? I mean, they've been around uh, for many, many years and normally it's only in March, right, what we call this FMP season, uh, where investors suddenly take to them. But uh, what is it about them that's become so attractive now? Uh, thank you, Smeda. Thank you for having me in the show. Yeah. About FMP becoming attractive, you know, when interest rates start moving up, then there's always a lag between the interest rates in the economy moving up and the FD rates moving up. So there's always a generally a lag of two to three months, right? And that is the period because, you know, I mean, uh, see, we invest in the debt securities on daily basis and we can lock in the money at the same price what is there prevailing in the economy. So how FMP works is that we collect the money from investors and lock in the money in the uh, similar period for which the money has been raised in those securities. And the expense ratios are generally very, very low in these kind of funds. So we are able to um, provide very, very good returns to the investor in FMPs because FMPs, of course, we cannot guarantee or indicate any returns. But generally, it is visible if the interest rates are high, say, 7% or 7.5%, and generally everybody knows the expense ratios are ranging between 20 25 pesa. So, so one can definitely make out that, that I will get 7.25% uh, around this kind of return. So that just makes this uh, very closer to FD, but there's always a gap of 100 to 150 basis point more than FDs. That's what makes it very, very attractive for the uh, high net worth in investors. Uh, Mr. Singh, is there any particular maturity uh, which is more in favor right now? Yeah, generally what happens as per the tax laws, I mean, if you are locking in the money for more than three years, then it, it attracts the long-term capital gain tax. And long-term capital gain tax is attractive for two reasons. One, the interest, uh, the, the uh, uh, rate of tax itself is low, that is 20%. Plus, there's a benefit of indexation. Indexation is nothing but uh, the, the inflation during these three years, where the number is uh, I mean, uh, brought out by the CBDT every year. So the three years inflation number is uh, taken out, knocked out of the returns. And on the remaining portion only, you have to pay 20%. So that makes it highly, highly attractive for the high in, uh, tax paying individuals. Okay, fair enough. We'll come back and explore this uh, point in greater detail in a bit. Uh, but before that, uh, Prabhleen, I wanted to ask you that, you know, besides just being attractive in terms of, uh, you know, the returns which we are currently seeing or the potential returns uh, which are possible currently, uh, what would be the other pros and cons for a person looking to invest in FMPs? Uh, good afternoon, Samira. So I think Sir has uh, very nicely explained what F how FMPs actually work. And uh, uh, there are a lot of benefits to it. Uh, and the number one is, Samira, because it's a broadly a buy and hold strategy. So what happens is there is no active management during the period of holding, which reduces the cost as compared to any other debt fund, which is uh, around the same maturity. So let's say, you know, uh, I think SBI has, in fact, FMP has recently closed and it is about 1,460 days, so uh, which is around four years period. So the expense ratio for this product would be, would be much, much lower as compared to any other active debt fund around the same duration. That's the first one. Second, I think, is the predictability of returns, Sumera. Um, so uh, bonds, because they are traded, they are able to capture and they respond more quickly to how interest rates in the economy move. And because we are in an uptrend in terms of interest rate cycles, uh, you know, that is one of the reasons, of course, the FMPs are being launched. 
and uh, there is a certain amount of predictability based on the indicative uh, you know portfolio that is given out by the fund house so they do not tell the constituents but because of the matrix which is given which is uh, which defines the amount of credit risk which will be taken and the amount of interest rate risk uh you get to know the indicative yields which are there and uh, that gives uh, the investors a lot of predictability as to what will be their returns after that definitive time period the third one because it's a buy and hold strategy the interest rate risk is to quite an extent negated because uh it works on a accrual model where uh, they are holding the uh, bond still maturity and earning the interest on that uh the fourth one somewhere of course is the tax efficiency uh, of fmps or any other debt product actually vis-a-vis fixed deposits and i think the most important one in fmps is the discipline that it brings because investors if they know that i'm locking in my money for the next uh, 1400 days or 1200 days i think that brings in the discipline uh, on the flip side i think only one concern would be there which is uh, in fact too sorry uh, the number one would be that investors must be careful and check the matrix as to what is the uh, indicative because there is no surety on what portfolio will be made there is an indicative the matrix which is given and based on that they must check what is the credit rating or the profile which the fund house is choosing uh that has to be the you know highest rated papers because in the past we have seen some trouble in the fmps as well in 2019 20 so i think that's one important uh, thing which investors need to check and the second one is that there is liquidity risk as in they have to be sure while entering the product that it's get logged in although it's traded on the exchange the liquidity is very low so they must be very careful that if they're locking in their money they can only get it after that specific time period Okay um Mr Singh you know one of the things with the uh, FMPs is that a lot of people who are looking to invest in it invest in it thinking that it is a very safe product right but even the past when I mean, the most famous case of this uh, you know going wrong was when we saw that Z stand still right because even then FMPs had to roll over their maturities because some papers uh, came into question What has been the trend in terms of how the portfolio quality has since changed? I mean, what are the lessons which have been learned, and what are the kind of papers that FMPs now invest in? Yeah, so maybe in the recent past, whatever FMPs have come in the market, and uh, generally also, and from our fund house also, we are making the portfolio only on the state development loans because there's enough. I um, mean, uh, kicker available on that, and uh, as state development loans are very, very safe. We are not buying any credit as of now, but yes, lot of lessons have been learned from the past. As Prabhlin was talking about 2019, there were some issues, and those were also more of liquidity issue than the, the the credit issues. But but yes, lessons learned because the people who are putting in money, they are they they look at these these kind of funds as being very, very safe. very very i mean uh, see that there, there, there will be no issue i mean as you see the the sdls I mean as you are showing on the screen when in july it was 7.40% was the this thing even if uh, we have created a portfolio of 7.40 and 2025 basis point is the expense ratio the net in the hands of an investor at the time of maturity would be 750 so we are not buying we are not trying to give a kicker to the portfolio of 15 20 30 basis point by uh, getting a credit paper mid while saying so i'm not saying that credits are not good there are so many good credits available but since people are putting it as a very very safe uh, instrument so we have to create the portfolio accordingly and as probably rightly said that is the risk when when we are saying when the fund house it uh, what they are saying they have to walk the talk so that's everybody is doing all of, i mean i don't say that we are doing nobody else is doing everyone whosoever is coming out with fmp whatever is being talked about the portfolio is made accordingly so so many lessons learned so that's how the this efficiency and perfection has come into the market okay uh prableen uh you know one of the things uh, like mr dp singh also mentioned is that you know portfolio quality is now uh, improved greatly right but if we talk about uh, you know what kind of fmp does well normally it's that three year fmp right because you get the added benefit of indexation uh you know if you can explain uh, to our viewers how this indexation works and therefore what is 
uh, the tax advantage that somebody would get vis-a-vis -vis investing in, say, a bank FD. Right, Smira. So because uh, uh, it's broadly the investors who are putting their money in FDs would move to a product like FMPs. Uh, of course, uh, the credit quality has improved over time. And the next benefit which they get here is of uh, indexation. Indexation is nothing but, Sumera, at the time of calculating your taxes, uh, the index uh, refers to, you know, calculating the purchase price. So the purchase price is recalculated based on what has been the inflation in the economy and indexation in mutual funds can be claimed of course for a holding period of three years and these indexation rates are calculated on the basis of the cost inflation index which is a number which is given out by the government every year so let me explain this with the help of an example let's say in the year financial year 2016 and 17 i made an investment of 10 lakh rupees and let's assume seven percent as the return which was earned on it and uh, I have redeemed the invested, uh, investments in 2021-22. So it's a overall starting from 16-17 to 2021-22. It is a six-year period. And at 7% returns, uh, we don't, uh, currently we are not looking at, you know, uh, if these are taxed every year, we just see what amount of returns we are getting. So the returns would be about 14 lakh to 1,050 rupees. Now, how is this taxed? Simply put, for an FD investor, this profit is uh, 4 lakh uh, 200, uh, 2050 rupees because 14 lakhs minus the 10 lakhs which was invested. And if a person is in 30 person slab, he or she pays a tax of 1 lakh 20,000 simply because FDs are taxed at your marginal tax slab. If you are a 20 person you know, tax paying investor, then also on the profit of this 4 lakh plus, you pay uh, at 20%, you are paying a tax of about 80,000 rupees. What happens in case of debt mutual funds or FMPs is that we now recalculate our purchase price. So the cost inflation index number in 2021-22, which is 317 minus the number which was there in 2016-17, it's divided. And that was 264. So we get a multiple of 1.2. And this multiple Sumera is multiplied by a 10 lakh investment. So 10 lakh now becomes 12 lakhs. That means that the government is giving me a leeway that, okay, till the time your investment in, is increasing in line with the inflation in the economy as set up by them on based on this number, they are not taxing me. So my purchase price becomes 12 lakh. And only over and above, uh, this 12 lakh whatever profit I have earned, now I pay a tax of 20%. That reduces my tax to 40,000 rupees. So in the first case, it's 1 lakh 20,000, 20% slap person, it is 80,000. And if in case we are using indexation, it comes down to 40,000. So the 7% return, Sumera, effective for the person in the 30% slab finally works out to be 5.09%. For the person in the 20% slab works out to be about 5.7%. But for myself, if I'm putting in the F, my money in the FMP, my post-tax returns are still 6.38%. Mm. So that's broadly how indexation can greatly help in reducing your uh, taxation. And uh, the higher the number of years we are able to use for the calculation, uh, the lesser the tax that we pay. Wow. Okay, we're going to take a very quick break. Our two guests are going to stay on with us. We have a lot more to talk about uh, the fixed majority plans, but all of that is up next. So do stay tuned. In. Hi, welcome back. You're watching MF Corner and we're talking about FMPs or fixed majority plans and what is giving rise to their popularity these days. Uh, with us are our two guests, Mr. D.P. Singh, Deputy Managing Director and Chief Business Officer at SBI Mutual Fund and Prabhleen Bajpai, Founder at FinFix Research and Analytics. So before the break, we have uh, you know, spoken a bit about exactly what FMPs are, their pros and cons and the kind of benefits that they enjoy. But Prabhleen, there is another similar kind of debt product which is called the Target Maturity Funds, right? And I mean, I can imagine that uh, because of the nomenclature, there is some scope for confusion. So if you can clarify what are the differences between FMP and this target majority funds. All right. 
So I'll call FMP is a subset of target maturity funds only, Surera. So target maturity funds, as the name denotes, it's got a target. So you know the time period for which you are investing, and it matures at that time period, and it's a passive strategy. So uh, the fund, uh, the product, basically the scheme, just tracks an index which is out there, and. Uh, in a passive way they are able to replicate the holdings of the underlying index i'll give you an example here uh, let's uh, pick idfc gilt 2027 index fund so here the underlying index is the crystal gilt 2027 index which means uh, through the name only one can understand that it's investing in government securities as reflected by gilt and the maturity is in 2027 now this particular product would mature on the 30th of june 2027 likewise we have the sbi cpse bond plus sdl september 2026 5050 index here sumera again uh, there is an underlying index which is the nifty sp um, cpse bond plus sdl index which is tracked by this particular fund by sbi so uh, i think the main difference is here as compared to an fmpr number 1 in case of a target maturity uh, fund you already know the underlying portfolio because an index is going to be replicated just like an index fund in the equities if i say that i'm going to invest in a nifty 50 equity fund uh, you know you know that uh, the underlying index are the nifty holdings likewise in the target maturity fund you know the constituents in case of an fmp the portfolio is constructed later so you have an indicative um, you know structure uh, as to what sort of interest rate risk and credit risk will be taken but the holdings are not known until the uh, portfolio is constructed the second difference and the very important one is that target maturity funds are open ended so you can buy sell at any time Uh, but FMPs are closed ended; they are open for a limited time period, and then you cannot redeem your money till maturity. Uh, the third one is that FMPs are listed on the exchange, and of course, with target maturity funds, because there are ETFs or index funds, that is not required. And uh, the fourth one is that FMPs usually are in the one to four year time period uh, they are launched, and uh, target maturity funds, interestingly, Sumera, are for much longer. till now we have seen uh, from let's say 3 years to 10 year period but now like idfc has actually um, you know filed for a product which is going to mature in 2062 so we'll have much longer duration uh, these target maturity products coming in the market so yeah, these are the broader differences between the two okay uh mr singh uh, you know i can imagine that the kind of investors opting for fmps would be the one uh for whom the safety of capital is the primary goal uh but what are the kind of financial objectives or say goals uh which an fmp is most suitable for no so fmp is suitable for uh, see the people who who know that they don't need this liquidity for uh, next 3 years 4 years so they, they they tend to put money here in fmps and uh, the basic difference between fmp and the uh, target maturity which we were talking to prabhain in the layman's language is the fmp is close ended that it will be matured at that time you can take the liquidity only at that point of time whereas in target maturity they if you are drawing in between i will compare this with the um uh, what do you call modes or this uh, uh, liquid fds which are being sold by the banks nowadays that you can put the fd for 3 years and whenever you want to withdraw you can withdraw and for whatever period it will be running you will get the interest against that target maturity fund is for the those people who are who know uh, more or less they will not require it but they want to have the liquidity option available with them even if they have to sell it at a discount or uh, uh, see at a premium because in case of fd it will be only a discount in case of target maturity there is a probability if the interest rate goes down in the market you may have the possibility of having a premium on the returns which you have already been uh, uh, see if, uh, you you has been indicated because you know the portfolio so that's another uh, point the people are same the people who are very very certain that they don't need any liquidity they put in fmp the people who they know that they have period, the money for 3 4 years but they may at this could be some uncertainty and they may need this money 
and the typical fd investor they they uh, customer they they can put money in target maturity funds so uh, sir is there any checklist an investor must sort of go through before they uh, you know choose between the many kind of fmps on offer no basically the uh, the portfolio quality as far as fmp is concerned whether what is the portfolio quality what is being indicated whether it's going to be sds whether it's going to be high rated credit uh, credit triple a rated so on and so forth or it's a lower rated investment grade paper also so it depends upon the risk appetite of the investor that is the first checklist which is there another point at this point of time when we are talking today See, there's another the example which uh, probably showed that was for the previous years where the inflation rate was quite low, and we got to a um, position where we were to pay forty thousand rupees tax. But as we are talking, the inflation itself is very high. Maybe after three years, if the higher inflation rate scenario continues, the there could be a zero tax implication mm -hmm. also. because the indexation will be high that is what but but uh, see coming back to the checklist i think uh, in fmp other than the um, uh, this one that uh, what is going to be the portfolio quality nothing and as far as target majority funds are concerned there as uh, is told earlier the maturity and paper is already known we cannot go like uh, if sbi is having cpsc bond and the the sdl then we cannot go out of this the index is made of both the cpsc mm -hmm. there could be 5 10% here or there that 50 50 I mean 50 could be 60 and uh, the the 40 could be uh, uh, the 50 could be 60 or 40 that way it can happen but but overall the quality will remain the same I that understand. is also yeah yeah that's how it is all right uh, mr dp singh prabhleen thank you very much for joining in today Uh, to explain the concept of uh, fixed maturity plans and of course the wider uh, target maturity products as well with that we're going to wind up on mf corner i hope you found this informational uh, to you as well but do stay tuned in the team of closing bell joins you next